What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? It's episode 802. Have a lot in the news today. Sad stuff, an accident uh, during a ride. That video's coming up. Then, I was a little confused. A motorcycle club rallying for anti-gun measures. Yes, gun control. I never thought I would have seen it, but yes, we got the video of that coming up as well. And the boogeyman, they're expanding. The Hells Angels are coming to a town near you. They are going crazy in Canada. They're like, oh my God, they're all over the place. These new clubs popping up that are associated with them. Ooh. Anyway. We have Tattoo Chris's 2016 Dyna Y Glide right behind me. And boy, is that old school right there. Old school flames on the tank, a skull freaking cover, and a bunch of skulls on the primary. Badass freaking Dyna there, Chris. Rock on. And it also has higher. Uh, bars, what are those? Probably 12s or 14s right there. Anyway, badass freaking scooter. If you want your scooter fe featured behind me, just email it to info at insanethrottlebikernews.com. Give me some specs. Let me know what it is about. And it's just not Harleys that you have to send up. Anyway, we're going to go to our first story to today. Highway crash. Or during an annual toy run by the Centurions Motorcycle Club today when several of those bikes crashed on I-95. This was the scene between the Academy Road and Coppin Avenue exits. The group was heading to Shriners Hospital with toys for the kids there. At least three people were taken to the hospital, but their injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. Let's hope everybody is going to be okay in that. That scene wasn't the best looking of scenes. One thing that I always talk about is the need for harsher punishments for impaired drivers, reckless, uh, you know, drivers. And I'm glad the message is getting out because, well, as they call it from the star.com, meet out harsher punishment for reckless drivers, says Biker Club Chief. Now, this is in a different country, but it also applies here in the United States. Reckless drivers need to be given harsher punishment to deter them from endangering others on the road. Wheel of Charity, a motorcycle club president, a health expert, I ain't going to even try to announce that name. But he's a doctor, so we'll call him Doc. Uh, meet out some punishment for these drunk drivers. Uh, in many incidences, reckless drivers organize illegal races on city roads, endangering many others and themselves. It's a big problem. It's actually a huge problem. I don't know if you guys heard. Or gals, and this has nothing to do with the motorcycle, but it actually affected me a lot. There was a horrendous crash here in Illinois. Kids were killed. I think it was a whole family was killed. The driver of the other car that caused the accident by going down the wrong way on an expressway and slammed head on into this van. It was a horrendous sight. It really was. Right now, they don't know if they were drunk or the driver of the one car was drunk, but it was sad indeed. If it had to do with being drunk, there has to be something that can be done to meet out minimum penalties for somebody that drives drunk recklessly and kills somebody. We see it all the time with motorcycle accidents. 
And it just seems like they walk away scot-free. And that is really a cry in shame. When did you ever think that a motorcycle club would get involved in gun control? It's like a whole new idea for me. I get it. I do. There's a lot of problems in Chicago, major cities, with gun violence. But at the same time, it's not being perpetrated by law-abiding citizens. I just don't get their argument. Let's take a look. Explains why an unlikely group from Cleveland is leading a rally for change at the state capitol. On a beautiful Saturday for a ride, this group is revving up to send a message. They definitely need to go back to the drawing board because what they have in place right now is, is not going to make America safe again. Timmy McCannon and Nett Rodriguez are part of the Lady Trendsetters Motorcycle Club. Off their bikes, the female riders advocate for causes near to their hearts. Things like back to school shopping for book bag giveaways. This weekend, it's another issue they say they can't ignore. Shooting a taxi that really took me over, overboard, yeah. We all experienced you know, knowing somebody or somebody in our family who's been killed by these, these crazy weapons and things like that. Another chapter of their group felt the pain in Buffalo, New York, after 10 people were killed during a mass shooting at a neighborhood grocery store. Later that month, 19 school children and two teachers died in Uvalde, Texas. <laughs> And a gunman killed seven and injured dozens of others at a 4th of July parade in the Chicago suburb. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 376 reported mass shooting events in the U.S. so far in 2022. In Ohio, the nonprofit reports more than 5,700 people killed by gun violence this year. That really just hit my heart and I just felt like I don't want to be the person that gets that call or see on the news that something is happening at, at their school. So um, I just feel like something needed to be done. It's why these friends, parents, sisters, and wives are riding to the Ohio State House. Lady Trendsetters joined by motorcycle clubs from around the state. They're calling it a peaceful protest and a call on lawmakers to roll out gun control measures like a ban on assault weapons. Mostly, they say they're banding together to make their voices heard. We all have kids, we all have moms, we all have sisters, brothers, we all share the same passion for gun violence. And, and I know motorcycle clubs, we get a bad rep, but not all of us are bad. In Cleveland, Gavin Ross, News 5. Isn't it funny how the media never addresses the many, many kids that are killed in the cities, but when a major story comes out about say the thing in highland park or down in texas they're all over it you gotta make you wonder why there is always agendas behind these people and the first thing we want to do is make more laws which ain't gonna work so i am kind of surprised that a motorcycle club would go that route just saying. What do you guys think, man? Let me know in the comments section. Now, up to the big, bad Hell's Angels. They're popping all these biker clubs that are linked to them across British Columbia. You guys are paranoid up in Canada. You really are. And I'm kind of surprised that the title of this is done by Kim Bowen because she really does cover a lot of club stuff up there. But that title is like, wow, it's so dramatic. Anyway, new motorcycle clubs linked to the notorious Hells Angels are sprouting up around the province, alarming police who think the older gang is expanding their reach. And then there's uh, like a little video playing of uh, what's going on. We're not going to get into that one, though. Uh, Staff Sergeant Lindsay Hodden. Maybe she's having trouble getting a man. I don't know why she's mad. Of the anti-gang combined force special enforcement unit says there are now about 
30 of the support or puppet clubs, as they call them, in B.C. compared to 10 chapters of the Hells Angels. Quote, there's been four or five new ones pop up in the lower mainland in the last year. The farm team system for the HAs is very alive and well. The farm system, come on. Among the new groups is the Smoke Show, an all-women's riding club. You think that, Kim, you would know the difference between a riding club and an MC after all these years of reporting on stuff, but I guess uh, you took a step uh, back. Uh, Hutton said six of the approximately 30 support clubs are self-identified one percenters. How can they be a support club if they're saying they're on the same level as the dominant? So they wear the little 1% diamond on their leather vest. That means they identify as outlaw motorcycle clubs. Now what's very interesting is, yes, uh, the Shadow Club Whaley, ha it looks like they have a, an MC on it, but the Commandos have an RC, and so does the other ones, riding clubs. Now, I do have to admit, they're wearing rockers, which I don't get. If you're an RC, why are you wearing rockers? But you're seeing a lot more of these riding clubs coming together, which, hey, you might not like what I have to say, but I think it's cool as hell, man. More riding clubs, the better, as long as it's centered around riding. Uh, he said the Hells Angels, subject uh, to continuing criminal cases and a variety of charges, including conspiracy to kill and cocaine importation, find the puppet clubs useful. Often in the support clubs, these are people who consider, quote, unquote, regular people with regular jobs. Last time I checked, so does all, you know, most one percenters. Just saying, man. They work in various industries. They work in government. They have may have access to information. Basically, what they're doing is hyping this all up to scare the population. But this is the same uh, government that gave you uh, the crackdown on the truckers. But I guess people in Canada are a little slow. What's going on up there? You know, it is what it is. And then they go on the Hells Angels and other OMGs look for these people and these groups to be able to infiltrate and exploit. And the concern for us is always is access to information. So you're already going after an RC. Already. Unbelievable. And then they go in about the United uh, Nations and who cares about them? Are they even relevant? Seriously with the UN. Jesus. Okay, another one is we have in Famous Riders biker gang leader Lancaster County man sentenced for drug trafficking. This out of mychesco.com. The United States Attorney's Office for the Middle District of Pennsylvania has announced that Jose Antani uh, Antonio Ramos, uh, age 40, of Lancaster was sentenced uh, by U.S. District Court Judge Christopher Connor to 87 months imprisonment for drug trafficking. According to the United States Attorney General Jared Carrium, Ramos previously pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine, uh and five grands of meth, Ramos was the sergeant-at-arms of the infamous Riders Outlaw Motorcycle Gang that was responsible for extensive drug operation in Lancaster. So he has been sentenced to 80 months in the clinger! But going back to the riding club stuff, I have to do a video on one again. Riding clubs are really starting to gain a lot of momentum because a lot of them just don't like the damn politics of what's going on in the MCs. 
they want to ride, they want to be able to get together, call themselves something. Kind of like the old school manufacturers deal where you just got together and ride. I think it was cool. Anyway, again, that is Tattoo Chris's uh, motorcycle. 2016 uh, Dyna Y Glide. Beautiful stuff, Chris. Again, if you want yours, just send me an email. And I have been getting a lot of them. I ain't ignoring you. I'll get them up uh, as soon as I can. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show right now with China Dow right after this music break. And thanks for watching all the way through. Don't forget, we do have the second part of the show coming up with China Dow. It is a hoot, let me tell you, a hoot. If you can't catch it live on Discord or our app in Google Play, you can go over to all your major podcast platforms where you can listen to the entire show in its entirety. Rock on. 